Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.08 and in this lesson we're going to take another look at the consolidate features as well as the bounce and bounce in place options. At the end of the video we're going to talk about duplicating time and adding in silence and a couple of other things that um, are just nice to cover here at the beginning. So we have this snare drum here and we can take a listen to it. So let's say that we want a, another snare drum. Okay, I can do that a few ways. One would be to click Command D, and that's going to duplicate the snare drum for me. All right, and if I want, I can pull it back and our snap to object is enabled. So it's going to snap right here to the end of the clip. I don't need any of the rest of these, so I can just go ahead and delete them. If you want to duplicate a time amount, so let's say I want to duplicate, but then leave some space at the end. What I can do is select my object selector tool, highlight this region here, right click and select duplicate time. All right, so you see we get that same amount of space and then I could again right click, duplicate time, or I think it's, uh, what is it, command shift D, and I could keep doing that over and over again. Likewise, we can actually insert silence. So this is gonna be more handy when you have a lot of tracks going in and maybe you wanna add a 16 bar phrase or you need to extend a certain section by four or eight bars or something. You could highlight a section, right click and select insert silence and you can see that it's just shifted everything over by the duration I had selected with my time selection tool. So that is pretty helpful when you are working on an arrangement, you need to add some extra time, selecting insert silence is the way to go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna zoom out and delete all the rest of these clips. I don't need them for right now. And we're gonna focus in on these two snare hits here. Now, for example, maybe I want these to be one clip and I don't want to have two separate audio clips going on. What I can do is I can select one, hold down shift, and now I could select either command J or click consolidate. So I'll go ahead and click consolidate. And so now we have one audio clip and two audio events. And we've already looked at how I could maybe change these. So let's take our second one and let's raise the pitch by a little bit. Let's take a listen to see if we can hear that difference. Yeah, definitely. Now, maybe I don't want to have two separate events like this. Maybe I'd prefer to have this all as one clip and all one audio event. The way to do that is pretty simple. All right, I could right click here and I can select bounce. And by selecting bounce, it's going to give me a few options. Right now, I'm going to focus on post fader which means it's going to take into account this fader right here. And I'll just show you the difference because if I select pre-fader, it's going to give me pretty much an exact duplicate of what we see here. All right, so these are the same volume level. Now, if I select post-fader, it's going to take into account that this is pulled down to minus 10 dB. So if I go and I bounce and I select post fader, you're gonna see it's much smaller, it's much quieter, and I'd have to bring this up to zero to match the level. Pretty simple stuff there. Now, if for example, you wanted to have your clip go for two, go for a full bar, for example, you need to make sure you extend your clip out. So maybe I want one full bar of content so I know if I'm duplicating it and moving it around, I have a full bar to work with. It's a little bit easier than working with one bar and, um, and whatever, however long this particular clip would be, like 1.4.3 um, bars in length. I'd prefer it to just be an even number like two. I could pull out my clip length there, right click here, and then select bounce. And let's set post fader for right now, why not? And you can see how now this has made my clip to be um, two full bars in length. And now I could duplicate it, or I can also option click, and that is going to make a copy. But now I have the freedom to add it to a new audio track or even add it to my first audio track and I can let go. And now I don't even need this anymore. So let's take a listen back and see what we've got. Okay, very, very cool. I could take this a step further and I could bounce it again, but this time I'm going to select bounce in place. And so bounce in place is going to do what bounce does, only it's gonna keep it all onto the same track. 
So it's not gonna create a new track for me. It's gonna leave this all on track one. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it did it, but it actually left two separate clips for me. So I'm gonna select those and I'm going to consolidate them. Now I'm going to bounce in place. And now I should just have one clip and one audio event and we can listen back and it's gonna be exactly what we had before. Only now we could duplicate this out and now we have a four bar phrase of uh, whatever this is, a clap or a snare going with our one little audio edit we've made. The one thing to be aware of, and this is pretty important, is that when you're bouncing to a new track and you want to take into account an effect, especially an effect that's going to go beyond the length of your clip, like a reverb, and let's put a long reverb time on this, like five seconds. If we listen back to this, you can hear that the reverb is going all the way to even beyond this uh, fifth bar. But for our purposes, that's as far as we're gonna take it. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to drag out the length of this clip all the way to the fifth bar if I wanna get that reverb tail. So if I right click here and I bounce this, and I set post fader and I click okay, it's only gonna go this long. And so now if I solo this up and listen, it's gonna cut off. So you can hear that abrupt end. And that's not what we want. What we want is to get that entire reverb tail. So to do that, I have to extend the length of my clip. And now if I go ahead and bounce it, looks like it didn't do, it looks like something got screwed up there. Let's see. Interesting. Let's try that one more time. I'm gonna right click, select bounce, post fader. This time it made it, so there was a little glitch there. But now if we listen to this, we'll hear that tail is going to extend all the way. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. So that was an issue that I ran into when I first opened up the project, but obviously there's a, a pretty quick workaround for it. And I guess they're assuming that if you're working with reverbs and delay, chances are you'll be doing it on effects tracks and not within um, these audio tracks themselves. But in case you are, be aware of that little issue and um, be sure to use that workaround. There might be a preference that will automatically do that, but I haven't come across it yet. So hope that was helpful for you and you will hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.